Hi, my name is Dr. John Heyer, and I'm a holistic chiropractor in Frankfurt, Illinois. My office's name is Holistic Health and Chiropractic of Frankfurt. In today's video, I'd like to talk about two conditions, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. These are really two sides of the same coin, so for today's video, I'm going to use the terms synonymously. But part of the problem with fibromyalgia is that half of the medical profession doesn't acknowledge that it's real. The other half that does doesn't always have a good approach of treating the problem. I'm here to tell you that it is real, it is reversible, but it's not reversible through medications. Maybe you or someone you know has been diagnosed with fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue, so hopefully this video will help you in some, some way. Many of us are familiar with the common presentation of fibromyalgia, and that is pain. Pain in the joints, pain in the muscles, but there are many other symptoms that can go along with that. Some people have adrenal issues, adrenal fatigue. Some people have digestive problems. They may be diagnosed with IBS. They may have irritable bowel syndrome. They may have constipation one day. They may have diarrhea the next, or they may have both in the same day. Other people may have thyroid issues or have been diagnosed with endocrine issues and the hormones are all of whack. Now there are many different authors out there and there are a lot of different opinions. Some people say these patients need malic acid. Others say they need folic acid. Other authors say no, they need guaifenesin or they need nitric oxide. There are many different solutions out there. For some, some patients, these are miracle cures, and they do great with. But for others, they may get some improvement, but then they revert back to their old ways and back to the old pain. And it's kind of frustrating because many doctors are trying to address these issues and end up feeling like they're going around in a circle chasing their own tail. And I have to admit, I've done that too. But what I'd like to suggest is we step back and take a big look at the picture and see what one system, if interfered with, can affect all the other systems. And that is the brain. The brain is the main computer system for the entire body. It controls the adrenals, the digestive system, the thyroid, the endocrine system. It controls every cell, tissue, every organ in the body. And if that's malfunctioning, the other systems can malfunction as well. But what does the brain need to be happy? Well, it needs two things. Stimulation and fuel. Now, fuel comes in the form of glucose, which is from the foods that we eat, and oxygen, the air that we breathe. Stimulation. Inside our joints are nerve endings called mechanoreceptors. Whenever we walk, whenever we move, we are stimulating those nerve endings that send electricity up to our brain. Kind of like this flashlight. It doesn't have any batteries, but it has a generator. And when you crank the handle, it lights the light bulb. Same thing with the body. So if everything is functioning normal, the brain should be getting 100% stimulation. But there's this thing called subluxation, and that means that the joints in the spine can be stuck or out of alignment, and they're not moving properly. So instead of 100%, maybe that person's brain is getting 70% or 50%. They're not getting the stimulation to the brain that they need. So with chiropractic, what we try to do is use gentle techniques to realign and loosen those joints so that the brain gets back to 100 or as close to 100% as possible. Now I know some of you might be thinking, oh, I already tried a chiropractor or oh, I'm scared. Don't know about that. Well, if you've tried a chiropractor and maybe had a bad experience, I don't know what to tell you other than not all chiropractors are the same. Try to find somebody who uses gentle techniques and has a good understanding about the situation. And for those of you who might be scared, I want to assure you, you have nothing to be afraid of. You just have to do a little research and find somebody who has a good understanding of fibromyalgia. But let's move on. The second thing, glucose. That's in the form of the food that we eat. If you've ever had an aquarium, the health of the fish depends on the environment that they swim in. We 
live in a sea of chemicals. We have polluted air, we have toxic water, we have chemicals and drugs and stuff in our food that toxifies our body and toxifies our brain. So what, one of the methods that we use in our office is called a three-step detox, which helps to clean, cleanse, repair, and rebuild the body. And many of our fibromyalgia patients say that they feel much, much better after doing a cleanse. Now the third thing, oxygen. And you're probably thinking the thing I did when I first read about, well, what's oxygen got to do with fibromyalgia? Well, according to Dr. Ali Majid, who is a medical doctor who has written several articles about fibromyalgia, according to him, he says that many of the symptoms of fibromyalgia are caused by cellular oxygen deprivation. Oxygen deprivation is caused by dysfunctional oxygen metabolism. All right, well... What does that mean in simple terms? It means the oxygen isn't getting into the brain cells, the neurons, the way that it should. And let's pretend that this is Soldier Stadium. I live in Chicago, so this is a, the Bears is our football team. And let's say there are 10,000 people outside of the stadium waiting to get in, but there's only one gate open. How long is it going to take for 10,000 people to get into the stadium? And it's not going to be very effective. Well, these people are kind of like oxygen surrounding the cell. If there's only one gate to get in, it's going to not work very well. But what if we open up, oh, 5, 10, 15 other gates? Well, it's going to make it easier for oxygen to get into that cell. And here's how we do it in our office. We use an oxygen concentrator to help increase the perfusion of oxygen into the cells. So the more effectively we can get oxygen into the cell, the more efficiently the body and the brain can use it. I don't know if you've ever heard of the term fibrofog. That's a term my patients use to describe this heaviness that comes over them. They feel like they're walking through a fog. But when we get oxygen into those cells, the fibrofog clears up. So these are some methods that we use in our office. And unfortunately, you can't do a lot of these at home. But there are some things that I can recommend that maybe you can incorporate on your own that will be a benefit for you. And most of them are in the form of nutrition and diet. So some of the things that I would suggest you avoid in your diet are starches, things that contain gluten, things like wheat, rye, oats, barley. Get rid of the pastas. Get rid of the spaghetti. Get rid of the breads. Other things that you want to minimize or remove alcohol, caffeine, and carbonated beverages. You also want to minimize or remove pork and cold cuts. Pork is actually not a very healthy meat. It's very high in arachidonic acid, and cold cuts, processed foods, have a lot of chemicals in them. You're also going to want to try to minimize corn and tomatoes. I know you might like them, but there are very frequently hidden allergies associated with those foods. And dairy, whether it's in the form of milk or ice cream or butter or yogurt or cheese, you want to get rid of as much dairy as possible because the cows are fed hormones, antibiotics and other things that get passed on to our body. Let me break this down for you real easy. If man made it, processed it, added chemicals to it, preserved it, screwed with it in any way, shape, or form, try to minimize it or get rid of it as much as you can. But if nature made it, eat as natural as possible. Lean proteins, lean fresh vegetables and fruits. Eat as organic as possible, but definitely eat more natural. Now, I hope this has shed some light on the subject, and I hope you've taken something away from this that will benefit you. If you have more questions or you're curious about more information, you can check out our websites. Our one website is www.holisticfrankfurt.com, and on that website you'll see a lot more information on nutrition than I can talk about in a video. And our second website is www.drjhirefreevideos.com. On that website, we have videos on fibromyalgia that might be of benefit for you as well. So, I hope this video has helped you. My name is Dr. Heyer. Have a great day.